All right, we are live. I'm just gonna go check on my Facebook page to make sure we are actually online, live. I'm glad to see you're wearing glasses too. I, I'm blind, <laughs> so yes, much, much um, necessary here with the glasses. So Tracy, thank you so much, first of all, for taking the time to um, be with me here and um, you're awesome. <laughs> We've never met in person, but we will be meeting in about three weeks. So I'm very excited for that. And um, so let me introduce you to our viewers. So I'm going to be interviewing the swing, the kettlebell swing queen, right? Well, <laughs> tell me. The queen of the kettlebell swing. There we go. The queen of the kettlebell swing. This is what Pavel Satsulin named you, correct? That's the title he gave me. That's the, the title. In his own words, we've got to make sure and respect Pavel's words. Yes, word. absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, Tracy, you have quite the story. Uh, very inspirational. So, you lost over 100 pounds in a matter of... 11 months I did. Um, just basically working uh, with the kettlebell swing and I think a total of 120 pounds in all 120 pounds in all and let me just clarify that yes so um I the the kettlebell was not introduced to me until I had lost 50 pounds okay so I wish I would have started a little bit sooner, but you know, it's all good, right? It all worked out exactly the way it was supposed to work out. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, finding myself 120 pounds overweight um, and not knowing about the kettlebell, uh, I, I, I started by changing what I was eating. I was ready to do that anyway, because what I was doing wasn't working for me. Um, and I started walking um, and Really, it's not so much the walking as it was the consistency of mm. chosen exercise, right? For me, I chose walking because, one, I couldn't run. I mean, that's completely out of the question. Um, it was the safest thing for me to do. And even then, even walking with 120 extra pounds was painful at times. Painful physically on my lower back uh, was... Uh, you know, uh, taking the load of, um, of, of walking for an hour. So I just wanted to clarify that. What, when the kettlebell swing was introduced to me, that's when real changes started happening. And what I mean by real changes was, I knew I was gonna be a smaller person. I knew I was gonna lose 100 pounds. That I, I, when I set my mind to something, I get it done. But I didn't realize that I would change my body. I didn't know it was possible. Change my body in a way that I describe it as erase the signs of obesity. Mm. Erase the signs of obesity. Um, every time I would tell somebody, oh, yeah, I lost 120 pounds, they were shocked. Like, I, they couldn't tell that I was ever close to 300 pounds. And that, that alone is a, is a really high compliment. Um, so as long as that's clarified, it, I didn't lose 100 uh, pounds from the kettlebell swing. But what I did was completely change my body in a way that no other exercise I'm convinced would do for me. And it's what motivates me every single week when I know I'm going to go out into the gym and do my workout. So sorry to get off track. Where were we? <laughs> awesome. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, I mean, it still doesn't take away the fact that you did lose an incredible amount of, of weight um, even yeah. after, after the fact, right? So right. just to back, just to backtrack a little bit, um, I want to make sure that our listeners are aware that you are also the author of, of the book, entitled The Swing, Lose the Fat and Get Fit. And what's super um, amazing is that your story 
uh, your transformation was actually featured in Tim Ferriss's book, uh, which is called The 4-Hour Body. And I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Tim Ferriss and he's a New York Times bestseller. So you, your story was featured in that book and you were just one of two transformation stories, I believe. So how amazing is that? So it's, it's a really important um, story to share with, with people. And like you say, you know, of, of, of exploring what is possible with doing such minimalist exercise. Right, right. Um, so getting back to Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Body. So um, he interviewed over 200 people uh, for that chapter of the book, which is called, uh, well, about the kettlebell swing, minimal effective dose. What mm. exercise can you do very little of and get a big result from? And that was the kettlebell swing. So, um, so he interviewed quite a few people and uh, chose my story as the one to represent the magic of this exercise, the kettlebell swing. But one of my proudest moments was being in the video trailer for that book. That, I was the only woman in that video trailer, which is badass, by the way. You can still find it on YouTube. Uh, Absolutely. I, I checked it out. <laughs> four hour body video trailer. Um, uh, not only was I the only woman on that uh, uh, video. Well, yeah, I was the only woman on that video. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was in it. <laughs> what else was I? <laughs> Hey, I don't know. It's really super cool. I mean, you know, I, I just turned 54. So, I mean, you know, this did have the video happened a few years ago in 2012, I think five years ago. It's just a really cool thing, right? Not only right. to be older um, and, and be involved in a project that was so cool and young and hip and all that stuff, you know, but uh, to be a former fat girl, I mean, who knew, you know, when I was walking around close to 300 pounds that someday that I was going to be in a New York Times bestselling uh, video tra uh, trailer for a book. Um, and then uh, be, get a chance to write my own book, tell my own story and be able to uh, expand on that chapter um, and expand on the kettlebell swing and share it with so many more people. Absolutely. And um, I want to I want to point out the um, the importance of, of the fact that, you know, I, I'm 42 and I work with a lot of women who are in this age category, you know, let's say like 35 and up. And um, I have my own transformation program. And, you know, some some of the women that come in when we're we're interviewing them for the program, um, they they're just stuck with this mentality that like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older now and I just don't feel that it's, it's possible or they think that they have to do so much in order to get the results. And it's always a question of, well, I, I'm not sure I have the time for this. And if, you know, if, if, if only they could realize that it really doesn't take a lot of time when you're doing the right things and you're actually, working with your body and stop the resistance, stop the fight. And, you know, it with, and, and I want you to go back and tell me about your story. Cause I know you started um, working or practicing the kettlebell swing at the age of 41, if I'm not mistaken. And how, how did, how did the progression go for you? Like how quickly did you start seeing results? How many times a week were you working out? So tell me it, about all that. That's a great question and great subject because I started swinging a kettlebell reluctantly. I didn't want to do it. So as a trainer, you know, you have people come in and they're reluctant. Mm -hmm. Imagine in 2005, nobody knew what a kettlebell was. It looked crazy, right? This cast iron weight with a handle on it. Oh my God. It was almost, almost embarrassing. Mm. If anybody saw you yes. try, to, try to do something with this thing. So, so these days, you know, we know what kettlebells are. Um, so, uh, and we have a lot more support in starting that exercise. So I went into it very reluctantly, but the reason why I did is because I knew I was going to lose a hundred pounds. I knew it. Okay. I, wanted to add some sort of weight resistance into my walking routine 
because I knew if I did not, I was going to be a big bag of saggy skin, plain and simple. I'm just going to throw it out there. All right. Mm -hmm. You can't lose 120 pounds without expecting to be left with some results of being such a large person. So I had given up on the thought of, okay, well, you know what? My tank top days are over. That's okay. But I need some kind of muscle tone. And I had done the traditional, I mean, we owned a, a gym for many, many years. I met Mark when he was bodybuilding. We're all familiar with bodybuilding, mm. exercises, you know, dumbbells, barbells, um, not sport exercises. I'm not talking about powerlifting or Olympic lifting. I'm talking about the regular person going into the gym, grabbing some dumbbells or loading up a barbell and, you know, doing whatever exercises or machines. Or, or, or machines. <laughs> yeah. Or machines. Um, that uh, a personal trainer will show you or that you've seen online. Um, so I, I had done that and I had never even come close to seeing any kind of results that I dreamed about. Results that I dreamed about. What did I dream about? So I was this person that thought that I was always going to be the chubby sister. I was always going to be the chubby friend. And I'm being nice by saying chubby. I was always going to probably be the chubbiest person in the room. You know, I was never going to have that sleek, athletic, um, toned body that looked fit and healthy. Uh, so I had given up on that. So when I saw this body emerging, you know, and what I meant, the, the body that I saw emerging was the first thing I saw was shoulder muscles, man. I dreamt of having shoulder muscles my entire life since I can remember. Um, and I just didn't think it was possible because I had done all the lateral dumbbell and the front dumbbell raises and the presses and all this other stuff. And I had never seen shoulders that looked uh, muscular or toned or, or, even, you know, when you get those little, you see those little ripples in your shoulders? That's so <laughs> awesome. I had never seen that before. But I did after a very short amount of time using the kettlebell swing. So, you know, that's what motivated me was liking what I was seeing in the mirror. The results coming quickly. Um, I just was doing it because I wanted a little bit of tone. As a aging, as a woman getting older, I was concerned about bone density. I knew I had to do some weight resistance for that. So it was really, I, I approached the kettlebells, uh, kettlebell swing specifically, because that is the foundation of every true kettlebell exercise. I approached that exercise as just as for my health, not mm. for how I was going to look, because I had no expectations. I had no expectations because nobody before me had had this kind of transformation. At, not that I knew of. Um, so I had nothing to base it on. Now, look at how lucky everybody is. There are success stories after success stories. Mine's one of them. Um, but it is proven effective results. Proven effective results that somebody who thought that they were always going to be just that chubby person or at least not ever see what I what I wanted to see being athletic and fit to to um, having that having that and being a very small percentage of the population that looks fit mm -hmm. all the time. That's Absolutely. a that's a pretty big jump. Absolutely. And, and I, I like the way you put that, a small percentage of the population that looks fit. It's an extremely small percentage of the population. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't yeah, have to absolutely. Be that. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's, it really is, uh, I think, just a question of, of education and, um, you know, people just learning the right ways of, of training and, you um, doing the right things and unfortunately we're so bombarded with so much information in the fitness industry you know even with nutrition that i think that's the uh, the thing that stops people is that people are just they freeze with with the information overload and they just don't know 
where, what to do or, you know, even how to get started. So I have, um, I'm curious about one thing that you, you said you had always thought of yourself as the fat girl and this is the way you were and this was just going to be life for you. So what did it for you? What was that turning point? Like what shifted for you where you said enough is enough? Um, I'm going to get healthy and this is it. There is no other option for me. So what, what happened? Well, um, I started to worry about my health. I started to worry about dying. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I didn't want to die. And I started having small health issues, signs, signs that I was not healthy. Let's mm. put it that way. Okay. Um, and, um, I was worried about having a heart attack because, uh, heart disease is, you know, one of the things that, that we don't talk about women, um, yep. you know, as we get older. Um, and I knew that, um, if I was going to drop dead of a heart attack, the biggest reason is because I was fat and, <laughs> I, I kind of joke about this, but I used to think, and this was serious. I used to think if I die because I'm fat, Mark is going to be really pissed off. He's going to be pissed because I didn't have to die. And it was for something that I could change. Now, I didn't expect to, to be super slim and fit. I just didn't want to be fat anymore. Mm. So you know, my first goal was to, was to get the weight off. The rest of this stuff is just icing on the cake, really. Um, so anyway, that was my motivating factor. I didn't want to die. I just didn't want to die in a way that was preventable. Let's put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, so tell me a little bit about how, first of all, I, I guess it was Mark that taught you the kettlebell swing, I would imagine. Right. And um, after, you know, the initial, well, first of all, what, what was your learning curve? Was it easy? Was it difficult to learn, um, from your, your point of view? And, um, at the same time, how did you start programming this into, into your everyday life? Like how many times a week were you actually swinging this kettlebell and what else were you doing? What, what other changes did you make? Great question. So we'll start with the first one. Mark showed me how to do a kettlebell swing because, um, he, he, he himself had been experiencing different magical effects from the kettlebell swing specifically because he had a back injury and, um, he's a, he's used to being a competitive athlete and the thought of him being in a, living a life where he couldn't progress in some way, what, what would have been devastating for him. And, and the kettlebell came into his life and he saw the transformative effects of that exercise in his own health and, and, and life. And, and for him, it meant being able to do something as opposed to being flat on his back, not being able to do anything, okay? So, so when um, I realized that I was gonna have to do some sort of weight resistant exercise, he's like, you know what? just do a few swings. Let me show you how to swing and uh, just do 10 sets of 10 swings. So the second part of your question is how did I come to this programming, this, this exercise? So I took to it very naturally. In fact, he showed me one time and I'm like, okay, get out. Move, move. <laughs> this was in our garage gym. And the reason why I wanted him to leave is because as I mentioned earlier in the interview, it was kind of embarrassing, this kettlebell thing. It, it was weird. So I didn't want him to see me do it. I didn't want anybody else to see me do it. So um, I started swinging and I, you know, I wish I would have paid better attention. I really do. But I would go out into the gym and I would, um, you know, do 10 swings, wait a few seconds, do 10 swings, wait a few. I don't even know. But at, at a certain point, I decided, hmm, I wonder how long it takes me to do 10 swings. So I put the clock up on the window and I'm like, 15 seconds. Mm. What? That's pretty cool. Exactly 15 seconds. Well, the mathematical person in me started saying, okay, well then I'll rest for about 15 seconds. Yeah, that's a good idea. So before I knew it, I got caught up in timing my swings. 
taking some rest, timing my swings. How many times could I get that 10 swings in that 15 seconds? Mm -hmm. 20 minutes would go by and I'm like, whoa, okay, cool. I think that's about it. <laughs> and then um, that's when I started to see uh, changes in my body. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Hmm. If I could do 20 swings, that would take me about 30 seconds. And let me see if I did one hand swings and then I switched over. So it just naturally evolved into patterns. Now, you know, now la using ladders, right? No matter what, no matter what exercise you use, using rep ladders in some way, it's a very popular way of training. But back then, you know, nobody was swinging as much as I was swinging. People would go out and do 10 swings or use them in circuit training. Um, but I was figuring out, you know, how to swing for 30 seconds, how to swing for a minute, how to do 25 continuous minutes of swings. I did some pretty crazy stuff. Did you, did you just say 25 continuous minutes? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the first that... time I thought, I wonder how long I could swing without putting the bell down. Uh, I remember the day I was out in the backyard, uh, 25 minutes was the first um, you know, and then I put the bell down, I'm like, you know what, I should probably put the bell down. And it's not like I wasn't using a super lightweight, wasn't using a super heavy weight. It was just a weight that, uh, you know, that I, that I got good reps out of. All right. Mm. So, so, um, there's so many ways to challenge yourself with the swing. Uh, it always surprises me when somebody says, don't you get bored? I mean, you've never done one of my workouts, have you? Seriously, <laughs> seriously, you have not done one of my workouts if you got bored. That I know. So um, because I had been in a household with competitive athletes, powerlifters, mostly at the time uh, where Mark, uh, when we owned the gym, Mark was doing powerlifting. And, and after the workout, all the guys would come over and talk about their training. And they were throwing numbers around and da 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 percentages around. I didn't think I was paying attention, but something rubbed off on me. So there I found myself alone in my gym realizing um, about how much rest I should take, how many sets I should do, how to increase my rep, my sets progressively, how to increase my skill progressively. Two hand swings lead to one hand swings. One hand swings lead to switching hands every time. It's just a, it was a natural progression. And then I found myself just repracticing these progressions in order, trying different orders, feeling the variation of, of di patterning, you know, uh, ladders didn't even come into it as far as rep ladders, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I kept myself busy uh, doing five and 10 reps at a time for many, many years. Um, so that's how I started programming um, my workouts was deciding on a starting point and knowing that I wanted to get to this point. How can I take 30 minutes to get from this point to this point? And I made it and I made it up, mm. <laughs> just made it up, but it makes sense. So when I had to start teaching it to other people, then, um, you know, I organized it a little bit better. And um, so now I, I think I've organized it pretty well, but there is, there is so much more. There is, so, I mean, seriously, I, I don't mean to be like so dramatic about it, but here I am still training the swing three times a week, never getting bored, learning new things all the time time absolutely and 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 the swing is really really the foundation of kettlebell practice so um you know mas mastering the swing which you, you never really master it's you're always learning there's always something new to learn you're probably a master i'm sure you, you you've heard the expression that to be a master you've had to do like ten thousand hours of practice I, i'm pretty good at what i do <laughs> i would i would i would think you're there i would think you're a master um so this is um uh something that i wanted to to um touch upon as well is that 
it's not just the swing there you know there's progressions in terms of exercises that you can add in as well there's the clean there's the snatch which i know that you do a lot of that as well so it it really it, you know i i do when i'm just i don't know what to do and i i know that i need to train but i'm not in the mood to maybe lift the barbell that's what i'll do is i'll take like 20 minutes and i'll just do a bunch of swings i'll throw in some cleans i'll throw in some snatches throw on you know some really good music and it's so awesome it's and the time just flies by and it doesn't even feel like a workout honestly it is so much fun so that's um it's yeah um and I, <laughs> Fun. I'll tell you what's more fun than, than a kettlebell workout, how you look when you do it consistently. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. How, you look, how you feel when you have a consistent practice, um, not only because it changes your body in, in a lot of really nice ways, but, you know, there's something when, you know, uh, in the last few years, this word lifestyle has mm. kind of taken off, right? And it's look, if everybody were to look at their lifestyle, like you mentioned early in the interview that it doesn't take a lot of time. My life isn't suffering because I'm because I work out on a regular basis. There's nothing else that's not being taken care of in my life mm. because I have regular workouts. I'm not missing out on something else I should be doing. What should we be doing? We have these physical bodies. They, re they require maintenance, which, you know, kind of is ironic because Mark's course that he's going to be doing the same weekend I'll be in Montreal with you guys is called body maintenance. Mm -hmm. That is how to maintain our bodies so we can successfully benefit from regular workouts. Because just working out, you know, that creates other other things right i mean um we have to we have to it's kind of like uh it's like a car you know i i know when he came up with this 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 uh title for his course body maintenance it was like maintaining your car so you don't want to just park your car and have the elements affect it with rust and dirt and all that other stuff that's what our regular running our car all the time but there's still maintenance that has to be done um so yes i work out on a regular basis that's part of maintaining you know um uh being able to to drive um but then there's also the 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 background work that has to be done to make sure that you know your your joints and your everything else stay stays um you know, uh, able to help you get those workouts done. But my point is that I'm, I'm not suffering. I'm not spending hours and hours and hours and hours working out. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that, yeah, I mean, who, like, seriously, who wants to spend like two, three hours in the gym? Um, at one point I was, uh, I was powerlifting. So I was, I was practicing um, powerlifting and literally my workouts were sometimes three hours long. And I said to myself, like, this is crazy. Like, yes. Okay. I love powerlifting, but you know, it's also comes down to like priorities in life. Like I'm, I don't, want to be a competitive power lifter. So, you know, I, I looked at that and I said, well, you know what, I can continue power lifting, but my workouts don't have to be three hours long. Right. So I kind of re, you know, switch things up and reprogram some of my training. So I still get the benefit of power lifting, but it can be done within 45 minutes, you know, and I, I used to work out like six days a week and, you know, at a certain point in my life, I had to really look at this and say, well, am I, Am I truly benefiting from this? Because a lot of people forget the element of recovery. And I was, I was in that situation as well, where I just kept, you know, you, you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, right? And you yeah. forget that the body, like that stress on the body, you know, people think that going to the gym and, and you know, pounding, pounding their bodies with the heavy weights, that that is what's going to cause their bodies to change. But it's actually... The truth is that the change and the transformation and the growth and the benefits come from your recovery. So right. that's that's you know that's something that um, is uh, is super uh, super important. And with with the way you you train, you're saying you're you're training just three days a week, and you're still you know you're still able to maintain 
um, uh, a very lean body and, and your health. And it's, yeah. you know, it's fantastic because there are there, you know, and, and I get it. People people do have a life. I want to enjoy my life. I don't want to just spend my entire day in the gym. And since I've I've really um, uh taken taken a look at the way I've been training and I just I started listening to my body and really paying attention and giving myself just more compassion and self-love and saying okay well you know what <laughs> enough is enough and yeah. I yeah go ahead you hit it right on self-love and we we could take this into a whole different subject yeah that's but an interview on its own <laughs> totally right yeah. This is what I find. If you are working out because you're desperate to burn calories, lose weight, have a have, you know, another notch on your belt for getting a badge for being in the gym the longest or being in the gym more than she's in the gym or you know, you know what I'm saying? You're working out for the wrong reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's when you say, you know what? I'm I love to feel my body. I love to get stronger or feel stronger or feel like I'm, you know, progressing in some kind of way. I love sweating. I love, love how that feels. I love when I'm not in the gym, how it feels. That's the best part. I love how I feel when I'm not in the gym. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I, I hate that you know, no pain, no gain attitude. And it's just give it a rest, people. You know, it's that's not what it's about. Absolutely. Like if you're feeling pain, you're not doing things right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. right. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're talking emotional pain as much as anything else, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's that torture we put ourselves through. I'm not saying that I haven't put in my share of junk miles. I'm not saying that at all. I've been there. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's why I can recognize it. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm not tempted to sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, after dinner, I'm like, I really should go out for a walk. Why? Because mm. you're going to burn off that extra macaron that you mm -hmm. just ate. Uh, well, if that's the reason, then that's the wrong reason. Um, because, uh, Anyway, we don't need to go any further about that, but I'm, that is a really, really, really good point that you bring up. Yeah. For sure. yeah. So, to, uh, you know, speaking of macaroons, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your approach to nutrition, which um, I know you also talk about in your book. Um, so tell me what it, you know, first of all, um, how did you get to the point of you know, weighing over 250 pounds. Um, obviously, it's a question of overeating. That's what happened. Yeah. But where was that coming from? Like, what, you know, like, in, in terms of was there something emotional going on? Or is it just because you like food? So I'm always curious about that. Because I work with a lot of women I, who have a, a Yeah, go ahead. I, I liked eating, not food. I like mm, eating. Okay. <laughs> um, Eating was my way of finding relief from stress. Mm. It doesn't have to be like, I wasn't stressed out. Mm -hmm. But being fat in itself is stressful. <laughs> and at a certain point, you just throw your hands up and give up. And I, and you know, I just feared that, that question you just asked me, how did I let myself get so mm. overweight? Um, I never really paid attention. Nobody ever asked me that until maybe the year before last, somebody said, how did you let yourself get so fat? And mm. I'm like, that's a good question. And my answer to that question is because I didn't think I had a choice. I thought it was my genetics. I thought I was mm. always going to be. The fat. Mm. And, um, I just didn't care. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> if, if somebody said, you're always going to be the fat person, seriously, why try? So you might as well eat that quart of ice cream. Mm. And you know, the one thing that I noticed now that I, I, I'm not saying that I never eat a quarter ice cream these days, because there have been times where I have eaten a quart of ice cream. But I don't <laughs> remember it making me feel so crappy as it, you know, before, before I could eat a quart of ice cream and start on the second quart. Seriously. 
Now I eat a quarter ice cream. I get to near the bottom and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Polish it off at this point. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm a lot more sensitive to, um, to um, overeating than I used to be. And I think it's all uh, accumulation of progression, right? Everything's about progression. So you start out by eating, you know, almost a quart of ice cream. And then before you know, you've acclimated to being able to eat a quart of ice cream. It doesn't have the same effect on you. It's like a drug, right? Mm -hmm. You can eat more and more and more and more and more and more and not feel the effects um, as, as much as if you're not used to it. But as far as nutrition goes, I don't, I don't, um, I don't hate any foods. I don't think that any foods are bad. Um, I'm fine with fats. I'm fine with carbs. I'm fine with sugar. I'm fine with caffeine. I'm fine with a lot of things. Um, and um, there's, I mean, that again, that's another interview about food. But um, my first approach was calorie counting. Because, I mean, this is 2005, right? We've learned mm. a lot in the last 12 years about dieting, about yeah. nutrition. And, um, but what I have always known is calorie counting works. Um, and it works on a few, on a lot of levels. But I can tell you when it won't work. It won't work if it pisses you off and makes you angry and you resent it. Stress, yeah. <laughs> If that's how you approach counting calories, and it's not going to work. So it worked for me because I'm excited. So remember, I've got this math brain. So for me, that data, that, that number, um, you know, um, fitting my, my meal plan into fitting into that number was fun for me. It was fun. And um, every day was a new challenge um, until it wasn't anymore. And I kept a food journal and I calorie counted for years. And then I, I, I didn't for many, many years. And now I go back and forth. I go back and forth because sometimes I go, hmm, I uh, wonder why I'm five pounds heavier than I want to yeah. say I want to be five pounds heavier than I say I want to be because I must not really want to be <laughs> because if you can lose one pound, you can lose a hundred. Mm -hmm. And if you certainly can lose a hundred, you can lose five. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, that keep us from following through on doing what we say we want. Right. Um, so food journaling is one way I think is a great way to um, either Decide to take responsibility to change it or not. Quit bitching about it, right? So, so um, way back then, I decided, okay, I'm just going to be fat. I'm honest to be fat. I'm going to quit bitching about it mm. and live it. Started calorie counting. That got me excited. The excitement, like, oh, I'm going to lose 100 pounds. I didn't tell anybody about it, by the way, um, because I... I didn't want anybody to poison me with their opinion about it. So, um, because we don't get a whole lot of support, nor do we give people a lot of support when they say, I'm going to lose a hundred pounds. Mm. Now, if you know somebody who has to lose a hundred pounds, it's easy for you to say, you know, you really shouldn't lose about a hundred pounds, but it's not easy for you to say, you can do it. Yeah, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You can say you can do it. But very few people say you're going to do it. Because not very many people do it. Right. But it doesn't mean it can't be done. And it doesn't mean it can't be done. Really be able to express who you really mm -hmm. are. Who you really are. Who you really are is someone that doesn't ha have any limitations, at least physically, right? Like a lot, of the, a lot of the times we stop ourselves from doing things, we stop ourselves. We're the ones saying we can't, we shouldn't, we don't deserve it. We, I don't know. Yeah, don't it's, it's, yeah it's all the, the crazy stories that, you've, that are not even true that you tell yourself every day, right? Right. So but, yeah. But we, we, don't, we don't support people in 
in um, quick weight loss. I mean, really, except for me, I've never heard somebody say, yeah, drop 100 pounds in 11 months. I, I've never heard anybody say that before. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people always say that used to be a big question. So do you think it's healthy to drop weight quickly? And, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Will that induce a heart attack? Will that induce a stroke? Well, you know what? Being 100 pounds, you're taking your life in your hands every day, too. Mm. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, I think it's like... I I think Tracy that you know everybody's different right so everybody everybody's body will react to exercise and you know in 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 a different way so I think it's a matter of finding just what works for you right and um and even in terms of of exercise you know like we obviously we're promoting the kettlebell swing um but if we you know and if we want to take it a step further just find what you like Find what makes you happy, whatever movement makes you feel good and do it. Absolutely. You know, anything applied consistently will work. Consistency. Consistency. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know any trainer that would argue with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what? One of my training partners, um, in fact, we trained this morning. She turned into a runner. I was not a big fan of running or, or, or you know, um, promoting running. And there she was, somebody, she knows how I feel about it. Like, who cares about me? <laughs> it's about her, right? She's right. A runner and she's on track to run an ultra marathon now. And you know what? Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. That's, That's fantastic. That, you know, if it gets you out of bed and on the trails on a consistent basis, then good for you yeah and and there's something that you um uh when you talk about your story you mention that you found or you discovered your inner athlete and i love that um yeah because a lot of you know and and when you were just now talking about finding like who you really are and what what makes you tick and what you resonate with and a lot of women are so disconnected from themselves, you know, like I, I ask women, well, think about like, who are you in this life and, and what are you capable of? And when you ask women these questions, they automatically will associate to, well, I'm a mother. Well, you know, they'll associate to their job title. That, that's not who you really are, you know, and there's there's no there's no limit to what you're capable of. And if you start to associate yourself as training like an athlete and you think of yourself that way you imagine yourself that way well what do you think is going to happen your your body is going to follow suit your mindset is going to follow suit you know and you will become that you will start taking your daily movement practice very seriously because you're an athlete right uh, well, that, that is definitely a big part of it. And I think that's the one advantage that I had uh, prior to um, making this part of my life is that I lived with a competitive athlete. So I tend to use the word training instead of working mm. out. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people say, well, what are you training for? <laughs> like, you know, it's just. It's, for life. <laughs> It's a, maybe it's just a mindset that I look at my workouts as my training. Um, so, you know, as far as being the finally being able to express my athletic side, I do believe that all of us have an athletic side. And what's that's what's another thing that's so magical about the kettlebell is that you can learn very athletic movements. The swing is a very dynamic movement. It's like a jump, right? Yeah. You learn to load, contract, you know. Um, very powerful, yeah. Very powerful. And Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it's very accessible to most people. Um, where they can learn how to do movements that are very athletic, very athletic. So, um, you know, I was always that chubby girl on the sideline that got picked last, even though I had desire and I had skill. I had some skills for being a chubby girl, 
But, you know, because of the way that I look, nobody, you know, it's like I was the last person picked. So, you know, it's really interesting that here I am at this point in my life, this time of my life, to be able to express myself physically um, in most any way that I want to. So, you know, and be successful at it. Like, I'm not good at everything. Mm. Uh, I just started a new yoga practice. <laughs> And every time I come home, Mark's like, oh, how was it? I go, it sucked. <laughs> and then I realized, you know, first of all, I'm going to stop saying that. That was the last mm -hmm. time I say that. But I realized coming home from yoga the other day that I don't have to be the best in class. It's my little competitive nature. I just have to show up and do it. That's all I have to do is what would I tell somebody who comes to my swing class who may, not, may, may need some improvement in their technique and, their, and, you know, be able to improve their skill. If they say, oh, you know, I'm just not good at it. It doesn't feel good. My advice to them would be just keep coming. Just yeah. keep doing it. Because what's the alternative? The alternative is to not do it. The alternative that, is, yeah, it's staying the same, right? And well, I, think, I think people just I think, overthink it too much. Not staying the same. Because by default, you're weaker, you're getting sicker, you're getting fatter. So mm. don't think you're staying, mm. you're staying the same. Yeah, a lot of truth to that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're yeah. very right. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. Yoga. <laughs> absolutely. My, my, next, uh, my next endeavor is uh, learning to hip hop dance. So. <laughs> Yeah, that you know what I, I've always loved dance, and I'm not getting any younger. So I said to myself, I, I have to, I have to do this, you know. So I'm, I'm checking things out, and uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> have you started? I haven't started yet. Yeah, but um, it's, maybe we need to find a class. Yes. Well, there. that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing now. Is I'm doing my uh, well, my little I'm, research. I'm probably showing my age. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't even know what I don't even know what what how to dance anymore. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's fine. I know how to swing. That's it, there. You go. That's that's a dance all on its own. So if we, if we going how to swing, you know, I'm going to be there in three weeks. And um, the more I think about what is it that what is it that I'm offering, you know, what is it that people can get out of coming to one of my classes or coming to my workshop? And um, Pavel said this, the swing is the people's exercise. What I want, whether you're an instructor or whether you're just a person that that is uh, interested in, you know, doing what I did walking out into your garage gym or your spare bedroom, or maybe even in your living room and saying, what do I do? I have to do something. What do I do? You know, I can show you what to do and how I did it and how, you know, if you're an instructor, certainly how you can help other people do it, do it for yourselves. You know what, if you're an instructor and you don't swing on a regular basis, then how can you sell the swing? It, it surprises me how many instructors don't do at least one swing workout a week. They're trying to do fancy smancy stuff all the time, right? Yeah. Complexes and chains and mm. all. Well, that's good for you as an instructor because, uh, you know, you can do that. But the regular person who comes to see you, can they relate to you? Can you relate to them? I don't know. But um, so that's what I love to do. I love to show people how to take simple exercise and expand on it to help create a healthy, fit body, one that you can feel proud of, feel proud how you look, how you feel, um, and with a very minimal, effective time investment, equipment investment, and, you know, not too much brain power either. So there you go. So Tracy, just before we, we wrap things up, um, tell me a little bit about your swing lean program i think that's something that's fairly new if i'm not mistaken right yeah. so if you if you want to talk a little bit about that yeah and it's still evolving so swing lean is i when i've been doing i've been leading swing only classes longer than anybody i had my first learn to swing class i don't even know how many years ago 
Um, but um, uh, a lot of people do them now uh, because they realize that it is, a, a, is the foundational uh, exercise. And you really can't pass go without, you know, learning a solid swing. So swing lean, once I realized that um, I was doing these classes that were 30 minute swing classes, that's a 45 minute class in total. We do a little stretching warm up. Maybe we'll practice some other skills after our swings. Um, but it, I saw this common pattern of 600 swings in 30 minutes. It's a very, it's average for my swing class. And I wanted to be able to, um, uh, uh, kind of, uh, um, share that with outside of my little world here in Northern California. Um, so, um, so I decided to, um, uh, I have, a, I have a, a subscription service where you can, if, if you don't want to make up your own swing workouts or you don't know how to do that, I'll lead you through them. And it's a $6.99 a month on Gumroad um, where uh, I, I post four workout videos um, a month. And right now I've got over 100 swing-only workouts wow. uh, as well as other things. But, but swing lean really is to me, it's not just about being having a six pack. Lean isn't about uh, 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 being lean, having a low, low body fat, although you certainly could use the kettlebell ballistics to, to help you achieve a lower body fat. But it's about lean muscle. And I think as we get older, if we do nothing, as we were just saying, you're by default, you're losing muscle, right? Um, it's about lean muscle and about increasing the lean muscle in your body with weight resistance exercises, um, increasing or maintaining, maintaining lean muscle as we age. And the kettlebell swing is such a safe exercise because it's a no impact exercise. Mm -hmm. There's no jumping, there's no leaving the ground. If done correctly, it doesn't, I mean, I've got a couple in my swing class, 600 swings in 30 minutes. He's 82. I think he just turned 83. Wow. Fantastic. That's no joke. And That's crazy. I'm not yeah. far behind him. I can't say her age, of course, but um, so, you know, and then I've got people in my class that are, you know, in their twenties. So it's the same workout. How amazing is that to have, that big of a difference in, in age, right. Mm. But be able to use the same exercise to apply the same, uh, help for conditioning and overall fitness and muscle tone and, and maintaining muscle, uh, lean muscle. So swing lean is about, yeah, you know, staying lean, um, uh, but also increasing that lean muscle mass in our bodies, uh, using swing only workouts, easy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fantastic. We, we actually have, um, one, uh, super, super amazing woman in our, um, in our classes and she's 70 years old and she did a, um, she did my 12 week transformation and she lost um, 30, about 33 pounds in 12 weeks. That's yeah. Great. I mean, with kettlebell training and obviously we fixed her nutrition and she's 70 years old and she's just rocking it. So it's, uh, you know, you just really, really great, inspiring stories. It's freedom. Yeah. yeah. Freedom. But once you get a little taste of freedom, then, uh, you know, you don't ever want to be, you can't go back. You can't go back. Yeah, yeah. You can't go yeah. back and you won't. You want yep. to help. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, well, one just well, one last question for you. Sure. I'm curious to know what was your longest swing workout and how many reps did you do? Like what was your your okay. craziest <laughs> craziest training? Okay, well, um that there there's been a couple because they're different. So the craziest thing I ever did was, and I'm not even sure, so I can't really say, because I've done so much stuff. <laughs> but right now, um, I'll just talk about the most relevant thing. 
Um, right now, I, I do what I call as the swing lean marathon. I'm just starting training to do it at the January 1st. It all started January 1st uh, in 2013, I believe. Here we are coming on 2018. And I did it last, last January. I've done it every January, actually, and, and I've thrown in some marathons throughout the year. But it's 2,000 swings, uh, 2018 swings. It'll be this January. Wow. But what I'm excited about right now is you want to talk crazy. I didn't do the math yet, but I just last week I started a progressive program to the marathon this January, and it's going to include some really crazy workouts between now and the next 12 weeks. Um, it's uh, it's on my Gumroad subscription service, all, all the workouts leading up to the marathon. So 2000 swings. Um, I'm going to be using a 16 kilo. So, you know, that's a lot of swings in the 16 mm -hmm. kilo. Um, but it, because it's, it's equal work to equal rest, it takes a little close to two hours. So mm -hmm. it's a two hour swing workout. Um, it's not the craziest thing I've ever done. It would be crazy for a lot of people, I suppose. Um, but I want to say the craziest thing I've ever, the hardest thing I've ever done was a thousand continuous reps, swing reps with the 16 kilo. Holy cow, woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, that was back in the day where I only had three minutes at a time to record on my camera. Okay. So I, plus, I couldn't record it. I was by myself. So mm. I can't swing. So um, that was a that was a kind of a challenge that was presented to me. And, um, and uh, I didn't accomplish it the first time I attempted it. The first time I attempted it, I went out to the garage thinking, oh, yeah, I'm tough, badass, right? Uh, thousand swings with a six inch yellow. Uh, um, uh, I, I don't know. I think I, I, I lasted to about 300 and my lower back was just killing me. Um, so, um, but I was kind of, you know, reminded that, you know, some things you really do have to train for. Um, mm. But I was able to accomplish it the second time I attempted it. And it was probably... Uh, my most the thing that I've been most proud of, to be honest with you, um, as far as swings go. Um, so, because that's tough, that's a tough thing to do. Thousand continuous swings. Yeah. Yeah. You think <laughs> fantastic. You're, you're amazing. Superwoman. So Tracy, um, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up. So tell, tell me where people can maybe purchase your products. I know you have some DVDs. Where can people find you? How can they follow you? Um, so yeah, just give us your information. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to promote is my swing, Lose the Fit, uh, published by then on Amazon. It's probably the best 10 to $12 investment you'll ever make. All of the, the, the swing uh, not only uh, tells you my story of how I came to uh, find the, kettle, the kettlebell and, and my weight loss, but it includes how to swing, instructional uh, directions on how to swing, um, and uh, pictures, of course. Then it also includes 15 swing workouts that have um that have videos that accompany them that you can have for free on youtube or on my website website swinglean.com i'll get back to that so the the swing lose the fact it would be the first thing that i would promote um swing only workouts i've got dvds that you can find on create space um .com. Uh, just google my name tracy rifkin um and and you should be able to find those um, mastering the hard style kettlebell swing is a product that Mark and I did together. Um, he's the mat. He was a master instructor for that video. I did the demonstration and tried to look cute on the side. Um, but if you want to know everything there is to know about the kettlebell swing, teaching it or learning it, that's a great DVD to own. And then I've got my, uh, subscription, my, a uh, swing lean, um, video workout, membership that you can find at gumroad.com slash swing lean. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I post at least four brand new original swing only workouts. They are progressively programmed over a month's time, but everybody has their favorites. 
Um, so right now I've got over a hundred workouts posted there for six ninety nine a month. That's like, you know, a quarter pounder and fries. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's uh, a crazy, um, crazy amount of money to not have to spend to get your workouts in. If you just need somebody to cheer you on, I'm always there. I've not missed a workout since I started in 2000. I will never work out. You can count on me. I'm going to be there uh, doing my uh, doing my workouts. So that's uh, video uh, streaming videos monthly. Gumroad.com slash swing lean. Um, so yeah, those are all the places you can find me. Lots of places. Fantastic. Thank and you so much. Bye. Montreal in three weeks yes <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to say also that if you're you know if you've you know you've been thinking about this cannonball looking object with a handle and you're not sure well I really encourage you to pick up Tracy's book and check out her stuff even if you're a beginner you will be able to follow with um, with Tracy's uh, book and her you know all the all the videos and um, other information that she shares you'll you'll be able to learn that kettlebell swing and um, she will be in Montreal at Hartzell Kettlebell Montreal in about three weeks. So that's November 4th and 5th. She'll be here with um, her husband, um, elite coach and athlete, Mark Rifkin. So they're going to be um, uh, doing a workshop. So Mark's going to be doing his workshop on November 4th, which is the uh, body maintenance workshop. And then Tracy uh, will have the pleasure of having her November 5th for her programming the swing workshop. So um, I encourage um, you guys um, watching, if, uh, if any of this stuff resonates with you, if you're curious, please get in touch with myself or Luca. And uh, you, know, you can send me a private message if you want more details on these upcoming workshops. Um, and uh, yeah, just you know, do yourself a favor, give yourself permission to see what's possible. And Tracy, Thank you so much for um, giving us uh, this hour of your time. I know you're probably super busy, so I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for being such an inspiration to so many people, so many women especially. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Oh, and, and thank you for having me. And just one real quick, I, I'm not sure, but I, I, I'm pretty sure we're putting together a beginner's class, right? So if you've never even touched a kettlebell, if you're overweight, if you think you're too old, or maybe you know somebody that's just been intimidated by it, don't be, don't be, don't be, don't be, because I'm going to be there and I'm going to show you that you can do it. It doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter what you haven't been doing or you haven't done. I don't care. Just move forward. Um, you know, come to the come to the class or come to the workshop. Um, you know, we're here for you. Yes, it's just a matter of showing up. That's it. Yep. Thank you so much, Tracy, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in a couple of weeks. Perfect. Thank you. Ha have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Much love. Thank you.